You know, in 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 preparation, um, and I think we've talked about this a little bit uh, the one time before, is that your preparation, you know, starts before high school. Um, but when you get into high school, you know, you need to be focused on um, what you're studying. You know, oftentimes we get into bad habits of, you know, waiting to the last minute to study. We get into the habits of uh, perhaps cheating. We get into the habits of having other people do our work, we get into the bad habits of um, just kind of cramming for stuff and not really, we study for tests as opposed to studying to learn. And so one of the first things you want to do to prep for college is to learn how to study and learn how you learn. Um, you know, there are basically three different types of learners in terms of um, just your, your learning profile. Um, there's auditory learners, there's visual learners, and there are kinesthetic learners. And so auditory learners are those that learn mostly by just hearing things. You, you know, you learn from, you know, maybe learn from music, you learn from um, hearing people talk about it. And, you know, those people are good in the classroom kind of learners oftentimes because, you know, most, most classroom settings are lecture style. So you're hearing stuff. Um, visual learners, they learn by seeing things. Um, so when a teacher puts something on a board and they, they, they follow that. Um, and when the teacher is, is, is mo moving around and showing stuff, you look in the book, you read, um, look at the diagrams, look at the pictures, those are visual learners. And then kinesthetic learners are body learners. They learn by actually doing and manipulating. Um, they like labs. Um, they like uh, sports because they can learn and watch and observe and actually do the thing that they're being told to do. And so, you know, once you kind of learn how you learn, you need to apply that learning um, to your studying, um, you can apply that learning to your um, how you are reading and, and kind of getting information and get into the habit of trying to, you know, learn hard things. That would be my second, learn hard things. Uh, we kind of get, we, a lot of times we're surface learners. Um, you know, we, we learn enough so we can pass the test, right? Um, and that's kind of how we've been taught, you know, often in, the, in, the, in this country, that you learn to pass tests. You don't necessarily learn to, to learn for learning's sake. You know, you learn to pass tests. So I think, you know, those are just a couple of things off the top that I would say, you know, in preparation for college, you need to be um, working on. Okay, great. Because I know last week we talked a little bit about that. And when you look at our school system today, um, and I, like you said, they're not teaching kids how to learn or enjoy mm -hmm. learning. They're teaching them to pass tests. So talking about some of the problems that we have with our school systems and how we can uh, help our students, especially parents, navigate mm -hmm. some of the challenges of just going to school. <laughs> um, I think, you know, when we talk about, you know, the problem with school, it's, 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 it's a lot. I mean, and, I, and I'm not saying that our school system is bad, our school system is um, lacking, 
and it's not so much lacking in terms of information. We give kids a lot of information. You know, they get their math, they get their science, they get their English, and, you know, they have a core curriculum. Um, and so, we, I mean, you could argue whether, you know, Common Core is good or not good or whatever, you know, whatever the flavor today is for education. But more so, schools should be a place where it's a place of discovery. Um, and it should be a place where I can begin to utilize my talents, kind of discover my skill set, um, discover the things I'm interested in, and kind of move from there. Uh, one of the things that, that I, I was privileged to do when I was in school is to learn how, you know, about leadership. Uh, when I was, I started when I was in uh, middle school and got involved in student government. I really enjoyed that. I was one of the senators from my class, and, I was, and it was an honor to do that. And then, you know, in high school, I was a, a, a vice president of my class. I did a treasurer for another club and the secretary for another club and a student body um, uh, officer. And, you know, through all of those different things, I learned that I enjoyed leadership. I enjoyed the process of learning how to lead and, and being able to help um, come up with programs and that kind of thing. And schools should be like that. I mean, it shouldn't just be about the A's and the B's and the grades, um, you know, but so it's unfortunate right now that our schools don't necessarily teach children, teach our kids to use school as a platform to discover what I call, which is the title of my book, there's something. And your something is your purpose, what you were born to do. Um, everybody was born to do a thing. And they weren't just born to do anything. They were born to do their something. Um, and, and I kind of took the, you know, when, when um, Jesus was getting ready to head back to heaven after his, his resurrection, um, he called all the disciples together and he was having to this last conversation with them. And he gave them, you know, a, what they needed to do. He said, you know, go into all the world and baptize and teach. Um, teaching them that everything that you've observed and seen me do. So he gave them a mission. He gave them a purpose. And so that was their something. And so I took from that, that everybody is given a God-given mandate to do something, fulfill something in this world. You don't just show up by chance. You right. show up by purpose. Right. Now, I, as you were talking, I thought about my own situation. You know, my, my parents basically, you know, had 10 kids. And so mm -hmm. I, I went to 11 different elementary schools, three different middle schools. Uh, I, mean, I mean, five different middle schools, three different high schools, and just going through all those different challenges and navigating through all those different school systems. Yeah. I mean, just getting to school on time for many parents is a big deal. You, now yeah. you're saying, you know, a school should help a kids determine their purpose. Where does the parent play in all this? Because I think the parents are spending a little bit more time with their kids and when I think about education, I think about countries like Nigeria. I have a daughter-in-law from Nigeria, but mm -hmm. I did a little research on Nigeria. There's only 300,000 seats available for college wow. education. Right. So all the schools in the entire country, there's only 300,000 seats wow. available. <coughs> no. and, and so uh, I'm, let me back up. I'm sorry. There's 300,000 people applying for those seats every year. Mm -hmm. There's 40,000 seats available. That, that makes it worse, Mike. That, that didn't help. Yeah, yeah. That's, the numbers, and man. so you have people really trying to get this higher education because it's right. scarce. Right. And, and they see the value of it because they know right. this education is going to increase their opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so how do we tell our kids, you know, when you go to school, you're there to increase your opportunity as adults opposed to going there, to, you know, I, I, I mean, you're there to learn, but it's going to actually right. help you take care of yourself. Right. So shouldn't that kind of be part of that conversation? Is that part of the purpose? Finding the purpose? Yeah, I, no doubt. I think um, parents playing a, a, a huge role in that. And one of the things I know with my parents, um, I, I didn't come from a household of 10 kids. Um, it was just three of us. So I, I don't know what that, 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 <laughs> that looks like, but uh you know, one thing that my parents did was they allowed, uh, I think, each of us to explore um, most of the time. One, I, 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 I may have mentioned before that when I was in 
you know, going from elementary school to middle school, you had to take this test to, 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 to be in the band. And I wanted to play the saxophone. At least I thought I wanted to. And I still do. I'm going to do it one day. But, you know, when I took the test, I didn't do great. Or I didn't get the score or whatever on the test to, to go into the band the next year in the middle school. And my dad, I, I learned later, probably when I was in high school, that he could have, they could have let me go into the band. They could have signed a waiver and said, go ahead and put him in the band. But they didn't. Um, but that was one instance where, you know, they didn't let me explore. But for the most part, <laughs> they let me explore um, my aptitude. They kind of let me do um, all the clubs and the things that I did. And they picked me up. So they supported me in that. Um, I would have I would have liked for them to have had more conversations with me about what I wanted to do, uh, but they mostly uh, just kind of said, you know, what do you think? What do you what do you what are you interested in? And let me kind of explore that. They tried to give me some guidance. My dad thought I should be in the engine should go into engineering. Um, I'm glad I did not follow that path <laughs> uh, because I still would have been in engineering school today trying to get out. Um, <laughs> but the reason he thought that was a good career was because at the time there was a huge, you know, push for engineers. And so he thought, you know, of course, thinking like you were thinking, you're going to be leaving here at 18. So you need to be finding out what, and you're not coming back. Um, he didn't tell me that, but I, I kind of told myself that. And so he was trying to find a career that was going to be one of those, you know, make good money kind of careers and, you know, have a good job and have good money. And at the time that was, and this still is a, a lucrative career, but I didn't, that, that wasn't my path. And, and so they couldn't give me a, they didn't give me a whole lot of guidance on that, but parents can, um, they can give their, you know, if they, if they enjoy their job, tell them the things that they enjoy about their job, tell them why they went into their career. Um, also tell them if they don't like their job, why don't you like it? Why don't you like your career? What would you have done differently? Um, if you had a different, if you could have chosen differently, um, why didn't you? And just kind of give them some truth about it. Because I think parents don't oftentimes give truth. They, they want to look like they're, or actually, no, kids see their parents going to work each day and how they complain and, you know, oh, I can't stand this job. I can't wait till I retire. And, and so kids hear that, but they don't know why. So because oftentimes their parents don't necessarily articulate the why. Gotcha. So I think that's something that, you know, as parents, need, they need to kind of do that. Right. So I think you're saying there's a role the school plays, there's a role the parent plays. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think about my parents, the power of parents to speak truth and to speak life into their children is so yep. important, especially when it comes to purpose. Right. Uh, my parents were Christians. They loved God. And I remember them as, as a little kid anointing my head with oil, mm -hmm. telling me I was going to become a great musician. I mean, as a little wow. kid. Wow. And so they would let me in a church blank, bang on the piano. Mm -hmm. And I'd never taken a lesson. I just started banging on it, it wow. shouting and, you know, hey, look, you know. And so I continued to do that all the way through high school. I ended up taking music composition in high school and college. And that That's helped me to increase my abilities. But just them planting that seed in me at yeah. a young age, even mm -hmm. today, I'm still playing music i've always found a place to to share my talents with the world so the school plays a, port, a role in that the parents mm -hmm. play a role in that mm -hmm. uh in finding that purpose is there anything else um uh, young people need to be doing in terms of mm -hmm. finding their purpose we talked about the school we talked about the parents right what is that young person's role the young person i mean <clears throat> students need to to explore um, they need to get involved in stuff. Again, you know, we kind of focus a lot on the academics in school, um, but students need to kind of get out of their own bubble and get out and begin to see and pay attention to what they like. Uh, if there's a particular subject in school that they really like, um, you know, admit and say, man, I really like this thing. If they like English, if they like reading, if they like science, if they like um, uh, math. And, you know, for me, when I, again, when I was in uh, middle school, I remember in the seventh grade, we, I took a class where we actually did a fetal pig dissection. And that was the whole thing for the entire year. Um, I loved that. It was the best class that I'd ever had up to that point. And so that just kind of helped me understand that, you know, I liked science. I liked 
the idea of you know cutting open and learning about the different systems of the body and so ultimately i majored in biology in in college and thought i was going to go to medical school um i didn't but i ended up teaching science um i ended up learning uh you know about teaching and, and so there's a whole nother path but that's where it started you know just kind of well, really, it started at, at my grandma's house in the summertime looking for bugs, but that's a whole nother, nother conversation. But it, it, it helped me understand that I enjoyed that. But I also I got involved in different clubs again, and we did a lot of community service stuff. I really enjoyed that and just enjoyed helping people that I didn't know. And so those kind of things helped me understand, and I paid attention to it to see exactly what really kind of kindled my fire and that what made me kind of say, okay, now I want to do that again. So as a child, you got to begin to kind of think about, you know, those things and pay attention. And don't just, you know, oftentimes we just think, well, I love basketball. And a lot of our students say, I just love basketball. So I'm going to go to the I'm NBA. guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> I was one of those kids. <laughs> Little skinny kid. I'm a, I would be an NBA player. Man, you're not even five, nine years. How you doing? <laughs> and you know what? I am the last one to poo poo anybody's hoop dreams. But the reality is we kind of oftentimes pigeonhole ourselves into those boxes. Um, and, we, and we might enjoy the sport, but enjoying the sport doesn't necessarily mean that's your path. That just means you might enjoy the camaraderie of being around the guys that you, you know, you're with or girls or whatever. Um, you might enjoy... The, 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 the competition. So that just may mean that you're really competitive. So there's some other, I mean, there's some skill sets that you may discover in sports, in basketball, in football, or whatever, that may not necessarily say it mean that you're supposed to go into that, but you perhaps should find a career that encompasses that, where you're, you're you know, in sales, that's a competition, right? There's, there's some competitiveness in, in sales. So maybe you would be a good salesperson. Um, there's, you know, camaraderie as a team. So maybe you're, you find those careers that have a team orientation. So, I mean, there's some different other things that you can discover if you're intentional about it, that you enjoy that may not just be about the thing. Right. Um, right. So I think that's something that a lot of students need to kind of do. So, you know, normally schools, and let's say some year round school, like in California, they have year round schools. Mm -hmm. You normally have a summer off. So, so the kids right. are learning in school academics, but that summer, you're talking about finding your purpose. What should they be doing during that summer period of time? We've got three months now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's a lot of time. So how would they use that wisely and effectively? And during the summertime, uh, students should find things to do outside of their home. Uh, you know, uh, for me, summers were, man, I worked. I, I, I worked. I did some crazy stuff during the summertime because um, my mom, would find me these jobs. And at that time, she was kind of finding stuff for me to do. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I worked. And so oftentimes during the summer, you can use that as a work opportunity where you're now going to a job, you're going to, and it may not be the thing that you want to do with your life, but you also discover what you don't want to do. Uh, so, um, I worked, uh, man, I, I worked at a, uh, for the uh, for my school, and we did. There was a maintenance building, and they would hire young men during the summertime to go and do help them clean schools and paint and put together um, uh, playground equipment and these kind of odd job kind of things. And so I did that a couple of summers. It was hot. I I learned I did not want to do outside work. Um, <laughs> learned that I wasn't going to be a painter. Um, I learned that uh, you know there there are some places that I wasn't going to flourish in. And so working helps you kind of learn some things, getting up and, and, and having responsibility, learning discipline, those kind of things. Um, but I also, during the summertime, my, my parents got me involved in different uh, exploratory kind of stuff. So I, I think I did an archaeology camp one summer. Nice. Um, you know, and so different things like that that give you exposure to do, and volunteering, you know, volunteering is a good opportunity to learn, you know, what population of people you think you might want to work with. That's good. So, you know, working with kids, um, working or volunteering with children, volunteering at other nonprofits and doing that kind of thing. 
it, it gives you a sense of purpose and it kind of gets you out of the house and doing something intentionally. This is good. Hey, man, I can talk all day about, you know, how to pair these young people. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to have to do a part two of this conversation. Okay. But this has really been really good. I want to close this session. Is there any uh, parting words based on our conversation we had today about mm -hmm. the problem with schools and uh, how they can help students um, and finding their real purpose? Well, I would just say that, you know, one of the things I, I, I don't give, uh, I would encourage students and parents not to give excuse to uh, my school didn't show me, my school didn't tell me. Your, res your future is your responsibility. No one else's responsibility. I mean, it, it's you that once you know um, to be intentional and you go out and get what you may not be getting from anybody else so that you don't have an excuse to say, well, they didn't tell me, they didn't show me. Now you know, now you can make a different decision to kind of get out there and get some of this stuff yourself. That's good. Hey, Lamont, uh, there you heard it. Lamont, Arthur, uh, go do your something. Uh, telling you what you need to do to be successful as you transition to adulthood. Uh, this is stewardshipofwealth.com. Again, we appreciate you. We realize that it doesn't matter if you earn $5,000 a year, uh, $50,000 or $500,000, you can become a better steward of your wealth. And we consider wealth more than just money. It's your holistically, it's your time, it's your talents, it's your purpose, doing things that God has designed you to do. So we ask you to Keep praying, keep believing with God, all things are possible.